Hello everyone. Welcome to BioWorld. Today I'll be answering a question. How does an enzyme accelerate a chemical reaction? To answer this question, we first need to recollect what an enzyme is. We've, we've studied about enzymes in semester one. You can learn all about enzymes in my video on proteins part three. Here you will find that enzymes are tertiary proteins and have a globular structure. But what do enzymes actually do? Enzymes are what we call as biological catalysts. The word catalyst tells us that it is able to control and accelerate the rate of biochemical reactions. Now, chemical catalysts can also do this. But what the enzyme as a biological catalyst can do is that it carries out the biochemical reactions at a fairly low and constant temperature. The optimum temperature being 37 degrees Celsius, which corresponds with our body temperature. Besides that, enzymes maintain their structure upon completion of the biochemical reaction, meaning that their shape does not change and thus they are able to be reused over and over again. But how do enzymes do this? Let's find out. Let's begin with the basis of a reaction. For a reaction to occur, we need substrates. Initially, the substrates will have low energy levels. So to enable a reaction to happen, we introduce heat. When the substrate absorbs the heat, it increases its kinetic energy, enabling it to collide with one another. Once the substrates begin to collide with one another, it increases the molecule's reactivity. The substrates go into what we call as a transition state. Once in a transition state, the bonds within the substrates break and new bonds form to produce a product. The product then loses energy and returns to a low energy level. So the increase in energy from the basic energy level of a substrate to the high energy level at the transition state is what we call an activation energy. That is why most chemical reactions require high heat to enable a reaction to occur. But then, how do enzymes do it at 37 degrees Celsius? Let's find out. By now, you understand that in a non-enzymatic reaction, high Ea or activation energy is required for the reaction to be completed. Let's now look at what happens in an enzymatic reaction. That is a reaction in which the substrate is placed together with an enzyme in a reaction that is at 37 degrees Celsius. This temperature is sufficient to provide kinetic energy to the substrates so that they can fit into the pockets found in the surface of the enzyme. These pockets are better known as active sites. Now, once the enzyme and the substrates bind together, they form what is called the enzyme substrate complex. And this enzyme substrate complex functions as the transition state. So you see earlier, when we discussed the non-enzymatic reaction, the reaction had to absorb a lot of heat to reach a high activation energy before reaching transition state. But now, the enzyme enables the substrates to reach a transition state at a low temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. 
Now, you know, during the transition state, bonds between the substrates will be broken and new bonds will be made to produce a product, which then returns to a low energy level. So you can clearly see here that in an enzymatic reaction, the activation energy required for the reaction to be completed is much lower. But why? Come, I'll tell you. There are a number of reasons as to why the enzyme is able to reduce the activation energy in a biochemical reaction. But all the reasons are mainly due to the presence of the specific active sites. Firstly, let's look at a type of substrate. These are substrates that are hydrophobic. Generally, hydrophobic molecules are unable to carry out biochemical reactions in an aqueous solution because they are hydrophobic. But you see, these active sites provide a suitable location for hydrophobic substrates to carry out reactions. Then, there are substrates that have too much kinetic energy, so they become extremely unstable. But the presence of the active site enables these molecules to fit into the active site and by doing so, release the excess energy, making them more suitable to react. Now, as you can see, when substrates fit themselves into the active sites, they actually are suitably positioned to carry out a biochemical reaction. Besides that, the flexibility of the enzyme can cause the bonds in the substrate to become stretched. Once stretched, the bonds become tense and easily break. So once the bonds are broken, new bonds are formed to produce a product. Okay, we're done with the theory. Let's have a look at the question again. How does an enzyme accelerate a chemical reaction? Well, it does this by, firstly, reducing the activation energy in an enzymatic reaction. Enzymes can do this because they have the specific active sites. So what do these active sites do? Firstly, they provide a site for hydrophobic molecules to react. Secondly, they enable the reactive substrates to become more stable and position them in a suitable arrangement for bonding to occur. And thirdly, they enable the substrates to become closer together. Besides that, the enzymes themselves can cause the bonds in the substrates to become stretched, tense, and eventually break. And to make new bonds, the enzymes can transfer charges between the substrate. Finally, the presence of the enzyme enables the substrates to bind and form an enzyme substrate complex. This enzyme substrate complex forms the transition state that enables the substrate to become a product. So with that, I conclude today's discussion on enzymes. Bye-bye.